When you think of rhythm in Prague, you probably think of constantly changing time signatures, sometimes switching every single measure. But there's a lot you can do with just one time signature, and one of my favorite approaches is to find an interesting time signature and get as many permutations out of it as I can. This is a method that gets used a lot in Prague. Often entire songs will take place in one odd time signature. And this is a nice way to help keep your compositions connected. And depending on the time signature you choose, there's a lot of different ways that you can use that time signature. Before I go any further, please consider subscribing and hitting the bell notification. This is the Prague School, and if you want to learn how to understand and write progressive music, I have hundreds of videos covering all sorts of topics for fans of all different kinds of Prague. The bigger the meter you choose, the more options you have for subdividing it. 7-8, for example, could be divided as 2-2-3, or 3-2-2, or 2-3-2, or 4-3, and three, or 3-4. Three and four. But with a bigger time signature like 13-8, there's even more options. 2-2-2-2-2-3, two, 2-3-3-3-2, two, 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 and 3-2-3-3-2, three, 7-6, two, three, 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 two, three, two, three, two, three, and 5-5-3, five, five, and, and a whole bunch more. To demonstrate this idea in action, I want to take a look at my song Solar Storm off my debut album, The Ascent. This song is entirely in 17-8, not once does it go away from that, but I divide 17 in a bunch of different ways to get different grooves and feels, which in turn allows for different sounding melodies as well. There are seven different rhythms that get used in this song. The first is this. The subdivision here is 3-2-2-2-3-2-3. When I subdivide time signatures, I try to take it down to the smallest numbers possible, usually twos and threes. Anything above that is often a combination of two and three anyway. Four, for example, would be two groups of two, and five could be three and two, or two and three. If you can get a bigger number like 17 into smaller, more digestible chunks, it's going to be easier to understand and feel. Rhythm number two is this. In this one, I'm combining two measures of 17-8 together, which is a total of 34 eighth notes and subdividing that up. It's eight groups of three and five groups of two. Basically what you get feels like two bars of 12-8, the groups of three, and one bar of 5-4, the groups of two. With a larger time signature like 17, it can be divided in ways that make it feel more like a common time signature, 12-8 and 5-4 in this case, especially if I'm using two measures of 17. Here's rhythm number three. This one is divided as 3, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, or you could count it as 5, 4, 4, 4. This is meant to feel like two bars of 4, 4 with an extended first beat in the first measure. If you think of each of the 3s and 2s as one beat, you'd have a bar of 9, 8, and a bar of 4, 4. Treating an odd time signature like a common time signature can make it feel more natural to the listener. It worked here to make 17, 8 a little more digestible. And here's rhythm number 4. This happens under the first main melodic figure, and it's grouped as 3 2 3 2 3 2 2, or you could think of it as 5 5 and 7. The 5s here are grouped as 3 and 2, and the 7 is grouped as 3 2 2. Both of these rhythms I covered in my 10 odd meters you need to know video. So I'm putting these smaller odd meters into this larger odd meter. Here it's two bars of 5 8 and one bar of 7 8, and this is another way to get more out of a time signature, to divide it into what can be looked at as multiple smaller time signatures. In the chorus, I'm combining two of the rhythms I've already covered. The first two bars use rhythm one. And the third and fourth bar use rhythm three.
Once you have a few rhythmic variations like this, you can start to combine them in different ways for different sections of a song. Rhythm number five happens in a bunch of different places in the song, but it first appears in the second measure of this riff. This is similar to rhythm four, but the twos and threes are reversed, making it two, three, two, three, two, three, two. This one I'm thinking of as three groups of five with a group of two on the end. This ends up being a very important rhythm later, but I'm just hinting at it here. This riff alternates between rhythm one and five. Once again, this idea of combining different rhythmic variations together. Rhythm number six happens in this crazy riff. This one is divided as two, two, three, two, two, three, three, or a bar of seven, eight, and a bar of five, four. Rhythm number seven, the last rhythmic variation in this song, happens in the eight string breakdown at the end. Just like rhythm number two, this one takes place over two bars of 17-8. It's grouped as six groups of five and one group of four, which totals 34 eighth notes. But in this case, there's a triplet played within that group of four at the end. These seven rhythms make up the entirety of the song, but I do a number of things throughout to get a little more out of each of these variations. I talked about a few sections earlier that combined a few of these rhythmic variations together, and I do that again in the last chorus section. Here it goes between rhythm one and rhythm five. Rhythm 5 is only hinted at when it first appears in that heavy riff I mentioned earlier, but it gets used in some really important sections later in the song. It happens under the climactic melodic hook. And it happens under the guitar solo. Rhythm number one appears in this clean tapping section. Rhythm number two appears again in the middle of the song. And rhythm number four happens again in the eight string breakdown. Another way to use this type of rhythmic variation is to have them happen simultaneously. While rhythm number two first plays in the intro, there's a melodic guitar that's playing rhythm one on top of that, and that melodic guitar is continuing from that previous section into the new one. This melody in the middle of the song uses rhythm number one, while the rhythm instruments, guitar, bass, and drums, play rhythm five underneath it. And in the breakdown at the end, the higher guitars play rhythm number one, while the riff plays rhythm number four underneath.
It can work well to combine multiple subdivisions of a time signature together, as long as the parts aren't clashing melodically or harmonically. One more important thing to mention is what the drums are doing. The types of grooves you choose can dramatically change the way each of these rhythms feel. For example, with rhythm one, the cymbals accent the downbeat of each measure in the chorus, but in the clean tapping section, the hi-hat plays straight quarter notes, and it takes two measures for that hi-hat to line back up with the downbeat. Over that crazy riff that uses rhythm number six, the crash cymbals play half notes in the first half, which cycles around the 17 rhythm in a cool way. And in the second half, the whole kit follows the rhythm. The placement of snare hits can have a big impact as well. During the final climactic melodic motif, the snare switches to following the cymbals when they go to halftime. The drums are another great way to further develop and stretch each of these rhythmic variations. So there's a few techniques for taking one time signature and turning it into an entire song. I'm a big fan of this approach, and it lends itself nicely to creating cohesive rhythmic ideas through your songs. It's fun to change time signatures all over the place, but it's not always necessary, even in prog. So give a few of these ideas a try in your own songs, and let me know how they work for you. Until next time, stay proggy.